بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف کنیکٹو ٹیشو ان وچ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس کارٹیلیج فرسٹ اینڈ دا بون سو اور فرسٹ لیکچر ول بی مائکروسکوپک فیچرس آف کارٹیلیج سو واٹ از اے کارٹیلیج اٹ از اے سیمی ریجڈ فارم آف کنیکٹو ٹیشو وچ کنسسٹ آف سیلس نون ایز کونڈوسائٹس وچ پروڈیوس این ایکسٹینسو ایکسٹرا سیلولر میٹرکس A ground substance which contains chondroitin sulfate and keratin sulfate which are predominant in the extracellular matrix. So what we have, we have cells known as chondrocytes and ground substance containing chondroitin sulfate or keratin sulfate depending upon the tissue we are discussing. So for different connective tissues we have different material in them like chondroitin sulfate or keratin sulfate. Along with the ground substance and cells, we have collagen and elastic fibers which are embedded within that ground substance and forming three types of cartilages. Those three types of cartilages are hyaline, elastic and fibrocartilage. So three different cartilage we have, hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage and fibrocartilage. Cartilages are avascular structure as already we have discussed that like epidermis, and epithelium they are taking their nutrition from the process of diffusion through underlying tissues and in case of cartilage it is the connective tissue covering known as perichondrium or in case of bone it is periosteum which we are going to discuss later on also as they are avascular they also have no lymphatics vessels as well as nerves how a cartilage is forming the main cells of the cartilage are known as chondroblasts. The term chondra means cartilage and blast means forming. So means cartilage forming cells. So chondroblasts divide by the process of mitosis and begin the synthesis of ground substance and fibrous extracellular material. These chondroblasts are trapped in the matrix in spaces they are called lacunae. So it means there are small spaces. The term lacunae means small spaces. So it's small spaces they are trapped inside and we name those spaces as lacunae. So they are lying in the lacunae spaces. Each chondroblast divides once or twice to form mature cells which are known as chondrocytes which are separated by a small amount of extracellular material. So we can say that the baby cells are chondroblasts and the mature cells are chondrocytes. These chondrocytes maintain the integrity of cartilage matrix. So we start with hyaline cartilage. As we have discussed, we have three types. The first one, hyaline. So when we see a mature hyaline cartilage which is fully developed, we see three different type of zones and an inner zone of a cartilage, an outer zone and the most outer layer is the perichondrium which is a connective tissue covering of the cartilage as the name is indicating chondrium means cartilage and peri means around. So around a cartilage we have a layer which is known as perichondrium, then a outer zone and then we have a inner zone. So here also we can appreciate in this schematic diagram that the outer one is periosteum. After periosteum we have an outer zone and then we have a inner zone which is more mature and which is more stained in the slide. So we start with the first zone which is known as inner zone. So this is the inner zone. This is known as perichondrium and then we have an outer zone. So it is strongly basophilic, so we can see the purplish or bluish color of this zone. The chondrocytes are arranged in clusters, usually consisting of two or more than two or four fully differentiated cells. And these group of cells, we name them as isogenous groups. So it means that the inner zone contains groups of cells clustered together in groups of two or four and we name them as isogenous groups. These chondrocytes are present in the lacunae has the potential to divide. So we can see the lacunae space and around that inside we can see the chondroblast and chondrocytes and this inside cells which are present inside they also divide mitotically so they can divide easily inside this space also. 
The isolated chondrocytes, which are not in pairs, divide to form clusters and clusters. Each chondrocyte secrete matrix and hence add to the increase in the length of the cartilage. So the major factor for the length of the cartilage depend upon the secretion of the chondrocyte matrix to increase its length. This type of growth is known as interstitial growth. So means that the growth is taking place with, from the inner cellular structure. This type of growth is known as interstitial growth. Again, we repeat that these chondrocyte secreting matrix and as they are secreting matrix and matrix, it, they are increasing in the size from the middle of the cartilage and the pattern will be known as interstitial growth. This type of growth occurs in the epiphyseal plate of long bones, articular cartilage because they lack perichondrium. As we discussed, when we say cart cartilage, a cartilage, especially the hyaline cartilage, it is covered by a layer which is known as perichondrium. But where the two bones are joining together, which is we name as articular surfaces, these articular surfaces contain the cartilage. It is mainly hyaline cartilage and here we don't have any perichondrium but in the rest of the part of the body where we have hyaline cartilage it is covered by perichondrium. So within the clusters the cells are separated by a thin ring of matrix around each lacunae which is known as pericellular capsule. So around a cell a capsular structure is there, we name it as pericellular capsule, mainly lying in the ground substance. These clusters are surrounded by a large mass of basophilic cartilage matrix and we name it as territorial matrix, ground substance plus collagen fibers. So a single cellular structure is covered by a pericellular capsule and then few of these pericellular capsular structures with the cells are surrounded by a matrix we name it as territorial matrix and these matrix between the cluster is less basophilic and called interterritorial matrix contain collagen type 2 fibers and hyaluronic acid so we can see in the picture this is a diagram which is showing isogenous groups of chondrocytes we can see the pairs we can see the alone cells also so these cells are covered by a layer of matrix and we name it as pericapsular, pericellular capsule, this one. This pericellular capsule is also connected with the other one. So if we see these four cells which are the part of isogenous group, they are again covered by a lightly more stained area as compared to the surroundings and this area will be named as territorial matrix, this portion, the pinkishy around these pericellular capsule. And if we see that these isogenous groups or clusters, they are present in different places with the spaces in between them and these spaces are known as interterritorial matrix. Again, it contains ground substance and collagen fibers. So in this picture, we can see pericellular capsule, we can see territorial matrix and we can see interterritorial matrix along with the chondrocytes. This is a diagram which is showing the periphery or outer part of the hyaline cartilage. This is showing the perichondrium and the cartilage itself. So perichondrium as we have discussed is covering the outer surface. So these perichondrial cells which are basically fibroblast cells, they are elliptical in shape with some elliptical shape or disc shape of nuclei and in between them we have fibers and as these fibroblasts are covering all this perichondrial layer just below that there are chondroblasts again these chondroblasts if we compare them with the chondrocytes these chondroblasts are also elliptical structures or flattened structures with some oval nuclei but as they are growing and going deep to the matrix of the cartilage they are becoming more spherical in shape 
So we can see this is a chondrocyte and this is a chondroblast. This is the initial formation of this cell and this is the mature formation of cells. And in between them we can see the intertorial matrix which contain collagen fibers and ground substance. And this area is showing the territorial matrix around the chondrocyte with the pericellular capsule. This diagram is basically showing the ground substance in a high power magnification that we can see that we have a type 2 collagen fibril. So here in this picture we can see this area. So if we see a, this single fibrous tissue area and we enlarge this area, we can see that we have type 2 collagen fiber or fibril and in between them we have a layer or proteoglycans along with which they are attached to hyaluronic acid and if you enlarge this collagen fiber what you can appreciate is that we have type 2 collagen fiber along with that we have linker proteins and core proteins and those linker and core proteins are attached to the hyaluronic acid and these core proteins or linker proteins have the attachment of chondroitin sulfate. So how they are attached and this whole structure is generally appearing in light microscope like this which we name as collagen fiber along with ground substance. So ground substance is mainly containing these structures collagen fibril hyaluronic acid in the middle between the fibrils and connecting with the linker proteins and from these linker proteins we have attachment of proteoglycans or these chondroitin sulfate in case of hyaline cartilage. That was about the inner zone. The outer zone the chondrocytes are less differentiated if we are comparing to the inner, in the inner side they are very well differentiated. The chondroblasts are present in isolated form not in shape of clusters. So here we can see they are present in isolated forms mainly in the periphery and if we see the thickness of this area they are less thicker in terms of or population is less over here for the chondroblast as we go to the deeper or the inner side. The most outer layer which we name as perichondrium which is outer covering is a zone of condensed connective tissue present at the periphery of the mature cartilage. It contains chondroblasts which have cartilage forming potentials and they form the chondrocytes and they result in the growth from outside. So this type of growth is known as appositional growth. So already we have discussed in the previous that we have a two types of growth for the cartilage interstitial which is from the central part from the inner part or the inner zone and the other one which is from the outer part is known as appositional growth which is mainly coming from the perichondrium and making the thickness of the cartilage. Now there is a question that when we see a hyaline cartilage slide under microscope it appears glassy. The hyaline basically word means halo, coming from halos and halos means that it is a glassy appearance. The factor responsible for this is that the matrix of the hyaline cartilage which is actually extracellular matrix, ground substance and fibers appears homogeneous because the ground substance and the collagen fibers have the same refractive index. So due to the same refractive indices we can't appreciate the collagen fibers separately along with the ground substance. So we have a glassy appearance, purplish appearance of the hyaline cartilage. The collagen fibers of the hyaline cartilage are type 2 fibers and arranged in an interlacing network of fine fibrils which cannot be demonstrated by the light microscopy. So if you want to appreciate the collagen fibers and ground substance separately we need electron microscopy. So a little bit we will talk about the structure of the chondrocytes. Chondrocytes fully occupy the lacunae, the spaces and the mature chondrocytes have a small nuclei. The cytoplasm is basophilic and granular due to well developed rough endoplasmic reticulum. The larger chondrocytes have a large lipid droplet in the cytoplasm. It washes away during the preparation of the slide. So here we can see this is a diagram which is showing the chondrocytes. So we can see the nuclei, we can see the rough endoplasmic reticulum, lipid droplets and some granular material which is surrounded or covered by lacunae and just outer to that lacunae is our capsular matrix or pericellular capsule. 
and in between them as we have already discussed that between these four cells are forming isogenous group and this isogenous group in between is covered completely by ground substance again which is a little bit darker staining and we name it as territorial matrix and this whole isogenous group is connected to another isogenous group through the matrix which is known as interterritorial matrix. Another thing that cellular matrix which is covering the lacunae are found by type 4 collagen fibers but mainly the main concentration of collagen fibers are type 2 in hyaline cartilage. Now this is the complete diagram which is showing the hyaline cartilage we can appreciate the perichondrium containing fibroblasts which are the flattened cells here and we can see the inner chondrogenic layer which is actually giving rise to or type of growth which is known as appositional growth and we can see the clusters of lacunae with the chondroplasts and coocytes inside forming isogenous groups along with the ground substance with different type of matrices which we already we have discussed. So this is whole about the hyaline cartilage. Now the second cartilage we are studying is elastic cartilage. It is found in the external layer, external auditory canal, epiglottis, part of the laryngeal cartilages, balls of the eustachian or auditory tube. Histologically it is similar to the hyaline cartilage with few differences which we are going to discuss. So as the name is indicating here the cartilage contains more elastic fibers as compared to the collagen fibers as we have discussed that there are three types of fibers elastic, reticular and collagen. So here we will found more elastic cartilage fibers. So if we compare it with the hyaline cartilage, hyaline cartilage is appearing bluish white and transulent or it is appearing opaque structure as compared to the elastic cartilage which appear yellowish and it is less transulent so it is more dense as compared to the hyaline one. The second the collagen type 2 fibers are there also the same collagen type 2 fibers are present in the elastic cartilage but in addition to collagen type 2 fibers we have more elastic fibers in the matrix as compared to the type 2 cartilage where in hyaline cartilage we only have type 2 fibers which are collagen in nature. The third difference that outer fibrous layer is collagenous so mainly collagen is there while the most outer layer or outer end is more elastic fibers in outer fibrous layer of perichondrium. So elasticity is more in the elastic cartilage as compared to the hyaline cartilage that is why we use a term which is known as that it is more resilient as compared to hyaline. So if we give an example if we move our pinna of the ear it will come to its normal position. So that is a specific feature for our elastic cartilage. The chondrocytes are smaller or less in number in hyaline as compared to the chondrocytes which are larger and more abundant in elastic cartilage. Mattress is more spacious while in elastic it is less spacious because of the presence of these chondrocytes which are more in number and abundant. There is no elastic fibers there, there are large elastic fibers are present in the matrix. Perichondrium is present in the both hyaline as well as in the elastic cartilage and the matrix in the hyaline is homogeneous so it appears same as compared to the elastic which is heterogeneous. So these are the major differences between hyaline and elastic. So major difference is that we have more chondrocytes larger in size abundant with elastic fibers giving them different appearance along with also that outer surface is also containing elastic fibers. This diagram is showing a schematic diagram and the staining diagram and under microscope we can see that we can see the lacunae spaces and it between C we can see the matrix which is heterogeneous it is not smoother or having a same look as we have already seen in the previous cartilage which is known as hyaline. So we can see the matrix is almost appearing same homogeneous in structure as compared to elastic which is not homogeneous it is heterogeneous and here you can see the cells are there and they are 
separate arranged cell with large size of cells as compared to hyaline and in between them we have fine elastic fibers present in between them which are forming the ground substance and this is the part of perichondrium. This is another diagram showing the chondrocytes, the lacunae spaces, the matrix and in between them the fibers are present which are elastic fibers more and the perichondrium. This is another diagram which is a little bit more magnifying showing the perichondrium with fibroblast, a venule we can also appreciate. So this is our perichondrium area. Just below that we have chondrogenic layer of perichondrium. So this is a layer which is responsible for appositional growth of the cells and producing new cells and then they are penetrating inside. And here we have chondrocytes present in the lacunae. In between merged are the elastic fibers along with the nuclei. The third and last type of cartilage is fibrocartilage. It consists of alternating layers of hyaline cartilage matrix in which chondrocytes either singly or in isogenous groups are present but the differentiating point that they are arranged in long rows as compared to the hyaline one or elastic where they are in isogenous groups and they are scattered here and there but here in fibrocartilage they are arranged in rows so it is one of the identifying feature of fibrocartilage and they are separated by thick layers of dense collagen type 1 fibers oriented in the direction of functional stress. So we can say there in the body where we need functional stress or which structures are more liable to get stress. So we have fibrocartilage over there and the best example is intervertebral disc and the menisci and the knee. So we can see here that we have in rays of chondrocytes present there in terms of their arrangement they are parallelly arranged and in between them intermingled are the collagen fibers which is a differentiating point from the hyaline and elastic. So here we can also see that we can see the rows of chondrocytes they can be a single cell or can be isogenous groups but arranged in rows and in between them we have this crown substance with collagen fibers present in between them. And the direction is uh, already we discussed that uh, it, they are directly towards the functional stress areas and lacunae spaces are there. So the major difference is that they are arranged in parallel rows as well as the collagen fibers are there which are type 1. So fibrocartilage matrix is acidophilic due to rich collagen type 1 fibers. This is another important differentiating point if we compare it with the highline one that it is more bluish in color or it is more basophilic along with the elastic also appearing some basophilic structure but here clearly we can appreciate that they are more acidophilic because of the presence of type 1 collagen fibrils which have an affinity to be pinkish in color. There is no identified perichondrium in the fibrocartilage, so it is one of the important identifying feature for fibrocartilage that we will not find perichondrium there. They are found in the vertebral disc, articular cartilages, pubic symphysis and association with some joints, capsules, ligaments and tendons where we required some or the which are taking some stress, functional stress, so these all structures are present there. So individually we will discuss them when we are talking about the gross anatomy of the cartilage. So here we can also see the fibers, the collagen fibers are present there and the cells are arranged in rows. This is our hyaline cartilage, isogenous groups with homogeneous ground substance again isogenous groups but interlacing elastic fibers are present there giving a heterogeneous appearance along with the perichondrium present in hyaline as well as in elastic and the last one is fibro which is containing isogenous growth but they are arranged in rows along with the in between intermingled are the type 1 collagen fibers giving a parallel appearance as compared to these two. So these are the major differences between these three cartilages. This is just a summary of the cartilages which is for you people and you just read it and if you need any help you can send an email on this email address. Thank you very much.